see him look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. There's all past, all that last, ever to rejoice. Well, as I journey through the land, singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, to the crimson flow. Oh, many arrows pierce my soul from without within. But my Lord leads me on to him I must. I'm singing, oh, I want to see him look up on his face. Oh, there to sing forever of his saving grace. And on the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Who oh, cares all past, all that last ever to go all right all right my wife says I'm a loud mouth anyway so whether I had it on or not you was going to hear me <laughs> praise God it's so good to be in the house of the Lord it's good it feels good in here it may be frosty outside but it's warm in here and we can also feel the presence of God and that kind of warms your spirit hallelujah praise the Lord praise the Lord you know this has been a pretty good week it has for me. It's, it's been a little busier than it had been, and I'm thankful for that. And I give God praise. It's so good to see each and every one of you here this morning. I know we've got people tuned in on the Internet watching us, and we want to encourage you, like I say every Sunday, say every Sunday, worship God with us. We came here for one purpose and one purpose only, and that is to magnify and lift up the name of the Lord Jesus. So wherever you're at watching us, whether it's delayed or you're watching in present time, we want you to worship God. And, and if you need a touch from the Lord and you're here today, we're going to have prayer after a while. And we're going to ask you to come up and let the elders anoint you and pray for you. And if you're listening to us on the Internet, 
we want to encourage you that when we're praying for the sick and when the presence of God is moving, reach out. Reach out and touch the Lord because I'm telling you, His presence is everywhere. God is right here with us and He's with you wherever you're at. Yes, hallelujah. Thank God, thank God, thank God. I'd like to open up our service this morning with a Bible verse. We always do this. It kind of gets us motivated, gets us thinking a little bit. This is a very popular scripture found in Psalm 91. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You know, that's a very short, sweet scripture. But we had an evangelist here by the name of Justin Carver. And Justin used that as a text and a message that he preached. And I wrote down something that he said because I never thought of it that way. He says, you have to be real close to somebody for the shatter shadow to cover you. You know something? When he was preaching that, I thought, Lord, I want to be close to you, Lord. Lord, I want to be close enough that your shadow covers me, Lord. That should be each and every one of our, our desires. I pray right now for each of us that we will absolutely ask God to shadow us with his peace and his comfort right now. Lord Jesus, I praise you, Lord. I praise you, God, for salvation. Lord, those that walked in those doors today, Lord, that may have trouble, Lord, in their life, I pray, God, that you give them, shadow them with peace, God. I pray, God, that you come over them, Lord God. I pray, Lord, right now for those that's on the Internet, Lord, that's listening to us, that have need of you, Lord. I pray, God, that you move in their life, God, wherever they're at, Lord, whatever the situation is. Lord, we pray, God, for each and every one. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for what you've done and what you're going to do. We give you praise and honor in the name of the Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let's clap our hands to the Lord and give him some love. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord. I praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let me do this while we're still standing. Just before we go into this song service, today in Mayfield, Kentucky, and all across our neighboring states, there is unbelievable devastation. In the middle of that, in uh, one of our churches that we know, uh, in fact, it's uh, the hometown of Dottie Rambo. Uh, that, that community particular, Dawson Springs, was absolutely almost obliterated for one of our churches up there. And because of the help of Brother uh, David Lester, we're going to be able to help that church. And uh, we're going to send them a, a generous offering. But I want you to know something, folks. Our people everywhere are hurting, and there are still people probably alive trapped under that candle factory beams. And I'm sure they're praying. Let's pray that God will give them more than just deliverance. Let's pray that they'll have an experience with God they'll never forget. Praise God. So out of the midst of sorrow, let's pray that God brings victory. Would you pray with me right now? Dear Lord... In a spirit of compassion and love, we come to you, Lord Jesus, right now. And we ask you, God, to visit those that are injured and damaged and hurting. Bring them comfort. For those, Lord, that have lost the many loved ones, probably the stretch of the four states, well, Lord, over a hundred people have lost their lives. That means, Lord, that there's a hundred mommies and daddies or a hundred sons and daughters that are grieved this morning. And they need, Lord, the shepherd of the valley of death to put his arms around them and help them. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank you, Lord, for helping us this very hour. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord. And everybody said in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining me in prayer. You may be seated or you can remain standing. Hymn number 331, When I Reach That City. On the top of Mount Zion is a city And the earth with glory and a field I shall look 
on its beauty in the morning when I reach that city on the hill. Oh, that city on Mount Zion. I'll not leave thee through the ages. Oh, when Whosoever will, and I'll find there a mansion for me waiting when I reach that city on the hill. Oh, that city on Mount Zion, though a pilgrim, yet I love thee still. I'll not leave thee through the ages. Never leave me lying cold and still, but I'll enter you in there forever when I reach that city on the hill. Oh, that city on Mount Zion, though a pilgrim, yet I'll not be still. Well, I'm not. But I'll enter to live up there forever when I reach that city. Come on, make it rain. Oh, that city on Mount Zion. Go up here. number 248 he brought me out let me ask you a question how many of you in here this morning can remember the day that you gave your heart to Jesus and you repented of your sins and you oh, felt yes. that burden lift oh, yes. praise God let's sing and rejoice about it this morning he brought me out number 248 my heart was distressed Jehovah's dread frown and low in the pit where my sins dragged me down. I cried to the Lord from the deep fiery clay who tenderly brought me out to golden day. Oh, he brought me out of the fiery clay. He set my feet on the rock to stay. Put a song in my soul today, a song of praise, hallelujah. He placed me 
upon the rock by his side. My steps were established and here I'll abide. No danger of falling, but here I'll remain. But stand by his grace until the crown. Sing it now. And after he said that, I, I can believe that. 
we really want to remember them in prayer, folks. There's a, there's a great need. And others on our prayer list this morning, if our elders will come while we're reading these, Dick Anderson is having colon cancer surgery this week in Cincinnati. Other hospitals, Melvin Beckett, Edwina Kuntzman, uh, Mike, well, that's in the hospital. But folks, these names were placed here in prayer, and you've heard me say that many times. They were placed here because they know we are a praying people. And our prayers get answered when we pray them. So we want to remember them uh, really special and those down there too. If you have a need in your body, please come while we're praying. And let these elders anoint you and pray for us. God can be your need today. He's a mighty God. Let's all pray. Oh, Lord. Let's pray for the folks out there watching all over. Join with me, Lord Jesus. All of those that are on the other side of this camera. Some of them are at iPads. Some of them at their iPhones. Some are at their computers. Some are at their computers. Some, Lord, are even casting it into their televisions. But wherever they are, as they sit there viewing this service right now, I'm praying for every malady that is in their bodies. And as they believe on you right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I am speaking a word of faith. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive healing 
by the power of the Word of God and the Holy Ghost that worketh in us. In the name of the Lord, we are sending the Word of the Lord to heal you. For he said, I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee. In Jesus' name, receive it into your bodies right now. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. One more thing. I'd like for us to pray for Sister Vivian Hager and uh, her daughters, Anita and Danielle. And uh, she has another son that's down in North Carolina. But uh, Friday about 5 to 5.30, they found Sister, Sister Hager's oldest son dead. And so it was devastating to the family. It is devastating to them. And would you join with me? Let's pray for that family. Lord, that you will help them. Help them, Lord, this day. In Jesus' name, give them guidance and comfort. Help them even, Lord, as they visit with the funeral home this afternoon to make arrangements. Let your peace and guidance be upon them. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Brother John, we're glad we got able to baptize you Tuesday night. Praise God. Yeah. Kenny, we're glad we got to baptize you Tuesday night. Hallelujah. And over there in the Sunday school is little Riley. She was baptized as well. It was a great night, Tuesday night, for these wonderful families. God bless Brother Robbins as he comes. Praise the Lord, church. I'd like for ushers to go ahead and prepare to receive our morning tithe and offering. And um, you know what Brother Rose and Brother Harper said a moment ago? It is, it is unless we've been through this, a, a tragedy like this, it is almost unimaginable. I talked to my, my boss, the guy that owns Kentucky Machine and CGS. I talked to him just yesterday morning. I called them and asked them how they're doing. They're in Bowling Green, and the home office, one of the offices in Bowling Green, and one's in Cadiz. And he said that he, and, he checked it out. He said everyone's fine. The buildings are fine. The, uh, all the employees are fine. But one of them, one of the Kentucky Machine employees, lost his home, his cars, some of his cattle. I mean, it just absolutely picked everything up and scattered it. He said, it's just unbelievable what the damage that it causes. And I was listening to him. He said that, you know, the hardest thing that hit them was their door blew open. Windows broke. But he said, my house is, my house is solid. I've got damage, drywall and some shingles. But, but he said, I've been blessed. I've been, I'm very, very fortunate. And I just, I agree. I, those people, they, it's hard to, you know, you hear about it out in Oklahoma. And you hear about it wherever. But whenever it's right here in Kentucky and, and we've all got family and friends and churches that we're affiliated with and we know about it. I, I'm, I hate to hear it. hate to hear it. But God is good. God is good. God is good. Uh, last week we made an announcement and um, uh, we're going to start this attendance for our Bible class, this drive. And I've gotten um, three of the four ladies I've got a chance to talk to. But I've got these little notebooks and clipboards. I'm going to ask you to get me a name an address, and a telephone number of everybody in your section. This is section L, which Sister Scarberry is going to help me with. Sister Amy Beckett's going to help me with O. And Sister Rose is going to, Linda Rose is going to help me with R. And I've yet to talk to my sister in the D section. So we're going to uh, pass these out. And what I'm going to encourage you to do is, please, when she comes to you and asks you for your name and address, give it to her. What this is for is so we will know everyone that's here in our Sunday school department. And if you happen to think of someone that's, that's usually sits around you and you haven't seen them for a while, get me their name and number. We're going to attempt to contact them and invite them back to Sunday school or just find out if there's anything wrong. Because, you know, could you imagine if you were, if you were quiet and like me and not talk to people and nobody really know who you are? 
timid, you know, like me. <laughs> and you, you, something's wrong. You're sick, and nobody knows it. We need, we need to know everyone. I want to make it a point to know who you are. And if you're, if you're missing, we want, to know, want you to know that you've been missed. As you write your name on here, look around right now. You know, these, all of these pews have got footprints and fingerprints on them. That's right. And just think, who used to sit there that's not there? All right? And write their, if you don't have their number, at least write their name. We'll go search. We'll find the number somehow. Okay, but, but this, is, this, is brother, this is Brother Robin's burden, but I wholeheartedly support it. And we will we'll work with everyone. Saints of God, here's what, here's what Barner Research has said. Barner Research has said that 30% of the people that stop coming to church because of COVID will never come back. I want to break the record. That's right. I want to bring our flock home. We're the family of God. This is That's Life right. Cathedral family. Praise right. God. Good, good. Well said, Pastor. Some other announcements I'd like to make a quick mention of. <clears throat> um, December the 14th is Christmas caroling at 6 p.m. I think our teen department is heading this up, and if you'd want to join them, I'm sure they would let you. See Brother David High. <clears throat> December the 17th through the 18th is Purpose Institute. On December the 19th, our morning service is at 10 a.m. Our Sunday school, That's next Sunday. Our Sunday school uh, children's program will be held right here. And at 6.30 Sunday evening, we're going to have an unforgettable Christmas concert with Warren Finney. And on December the 21st, our youth department is, our, is a Christmas party they're having for our, for our kids. Uh, December the 31st is watch night service at 7.30 p.m. And January the 27th through the 28th is CCYC in Charleston, West Virginia. That is a great, great evangelistic out, I mean, it is a, we always have some good evangelists come in for that, and you won't want to miss it. It's great. Jamie and I enjoy it. Also, I'd like to make mention of this quickly. Uh, my wife went to a Christmas dinner. I think it was Monday night the ladies had. Was it at Monday night? I believe Jamie said there was like 80 young, was there 90? 90 women. Woo! That's great. They had a great time. She came home. My mother-in-law, they, they enjoyed it. They had a great time. And I just want to congratulate you all for having such a good turnout and uh, showing us guys up. All right. <laughs> all right. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I love you, Lord. We thank you, God, for this church and for every person that takes care of this church, Lord, that supports this church. I thank you, Lord, for this offering and tithes that we're about to receive. Lord, bless those, God. And, Lord, those that may not have to give, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you pour out your blessing on them so that they can support the work in your kingdom. We ask this blessing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Ushers, if you would please come right on, and I believe my uh, wife, Sister Jamie, is going to sing. The news came to Jesus. Please come fast. Lazarus is sick, and without your help, he will not last. Mary and Martha watch their brother die. They waited for Jesus, he did not come. And they wondered why the death watch was over, buried for days. Somebody said, he'll soon be here, the Lord's on his way. Martha ran to him, and then she cried. Lord, if you had been here, you could have healed him. He'd still be alive. But you're four days late. And all hope is gone. Lord, we don't understand why you waited so long. But his way is God's way. 
but yours or mine and isn't it great when he's four days late he's still on time jesus said martha show me the grave but she said lord you don't understand he's been there four days the gravestone was rolled back then jesus cried lazarus come forth then somebody said he's alive he's alive a battle of fear you cried to the Lord I need you now but he has not appeared friend don't be discouraged cause he's still the same he'll soon be here he'll roll back the stone and he'll call out your name when he's four days late. And all hope is gone. Lord, we don't understand why you waited so long. But his way is God's way. It's not yours. He's always on time. We serve an on-time God. Hallelujah. Church, I'd like to make mention of something. Every, every year, we try to give a Christmas, a monetary Christmas gift, if we can, to Pastor and Sister Har Harper. It's, he's our bishop. She's our first lady. And I want to encourage each and every one of you, between now and next Sunday, to see me or Brother Kuntzman, if you can, if you're able. And... Um, uh, if you write a check, make it out to Pastor and Sister Harper. If you give cash, just put it in the, if you want to put it in a card, you're welcome to do that. We'd like to collectively give them something for Christmas. They have helped us. They have blessed us. They have preached the word to us. They've encouraged us. They've uplifted our soul. They have preached the word of God that absolutely pricks our hearts over and over to us. And let's, let's try to take care of them during this Christmas season. That's what I wanted to say, and God bless you. Well, that was worth letting you go first. <laughs> Friday night, we had a fabulous minister's banquet, and uh, I'd like to compliment the ladies of the church, Brother, Brother Davis, and also... Uh, Brother Dave Edward, he fixed the turkey. Brother Edwards fixed the ham. And the ladies, I don't know who fixed in each individual, but it was one of the most flavorful, best meals that I've sat down to in that kind of an arrangement. And for you ladies that participated in that, if you're in here this morning and you helped with that, would you care to stand? We'll recognize you again tonight, but if you help with that, please stand. Let's give them a hand. And also, we're going to recognize this evening our young people. Our teens came out and did an incredible job of waiting on all of those ministers and their wives. And they did it very efficiently and very professional. I was so proud of them. We'll congratulate them tonight. And then also, uh, I, I want to make mention of this that the decor 
to Sister Annie Stevens. It, she's not here, but she went out of her way, and I'm going to tell you what. We could have gone to any hotel in the tri-state area and could have paid big bucks to have had a venue, and it would not look, probably wouldn't have looked as nice and been as well arranged. You see Sister Annie Stevens, you thank her very much for her imagination and what she gave us, and the ladies worked to help her. This morning also, I want to make mention of this. One of our Sunday school girls is here. Kay Ransbottom Huff Bailey is here. I got it all in. How about that, Kay? Would you care to stand and testify? Praise God. God bless you, Sister Kay. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Yes, they have a great preacher. Brother Robert, and I can't—I can remember his first name. I can't remember his last name. Brother Tisdale, Brother Robert Tisdale, what an incredible preacher! He preached at our general conference year before last, and I'm telling you, he was just beyond phenomenal. And uh, of course, they had a good West Virginian down there for years, Brother Wolf, and that's the church in Tampa. Folks, we're blessed to have Brother Koontzman here to help minister to us today. And I appreciate him and his hard work so much. Would you stand as Brother Kootzman comes? I love him too much to fail him now. Too much to break. I promised the Lord that I would make it somehow. Love Him too much to fail Him now. I love Him too much to fail. His love and His grace, my heart was overwhelmed to think a king would take my place. I cried, Lord, I'll go with Thee every step of the way. It's all. My debt to repay, I love him too much to fail him now. I love him too much, oh, to break my vow.
that your prayer today? Just love the Lord right now. I love you, Jesus. I love you. The second verse said something about what good are broken promises. Amen. I want to keep my promise to the Lord. How about you this morning? Harder to prove it. Look at somebody and say, I love you today. I'm glad you're here. Not good or broken promises. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty God. Amen. Amen. And it's certainly good to be here today and to stand behind the sacred desk once again. Turn your Bible this morning to Exodus chapter 19, verse 5 through 6. And thank you for praying for my wife and her family, our family, <laughs> at this time. And uh, God is a comforter. I'm so glad I have the Holy Ghost today. <laughs> and I'm glad I have the family of God. Amen. Exodus chapter 19, verse 5 through 6. Now, therefore, if you obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Let's pray. I love you, Jesus. I thank you for Jesus your presence name. this morning. Thank you for your people that are here. We ask you, Lord, you have your way to speak to our hearts and our minds, and God, increase our faith today in Jesus' name. Everybody said, in Jesus' name. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. When we look through the Old Testament, we find that the children of Israel received the greatest privilege ever offered to humanity, it was the privilege of relationship with God. They were chosen by God among all the people of the world. He chose them. Uh, one scripture says in the Bible, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. There's something about being chosen. Uh, how many played dodgeball in school? Well, I got some hands. How many, play? How, many were, how many got picked first in school? Amen. That was the greatest feeling. You know, I had been picked among everybody else. I was the first one picked. How many got chose last? Uh, didn't like that one either. I got chosen last a few times. And uh, my brother would get mad at me. I love my brother, but I wanted to win. And so I would sometimes choose him <laughs> last. <laughs> or I would wait for him to be chosen for the other team. And uh, he, uh, I'm thankful that he finally uh, realized that for me at that point in life, winning meant more to me at that moment than blood. I wanted to win that game. And, uh, but later on, I'm so thankful he forgave me <laughs> because we're close. And uh, I would choose my brother above almost anybody. But God is a God who chooses to have relationship with us. He desires to dwell in us. That's why we are the temples of the Holy Ghost. If you have received the Holy Ghost today, Paul said, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? His presence is inside of you and he abides in you. And the thing about the Holy Ghost is it is an experience that you will have if you have faith towards Christ and been baptized in His name and repent of your sins. You will receive. The Bible says you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And we're in a Pentecostal church, but whether we had any other name in our building or not, it's still true that you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost with that initial sign of speaking in other tongues as God's Spirit gives you the utterance because that's how it happened in the Bible. And that's how it continues to happen today. I wonder if i got any tongue talkers in here. Just raise your hand if you spoke in tongues. God's Spirit gave you the utterance. i got to tell you that tongues is not the Holy Ghost, but it's a sign that you have received the Holy Ghost. And so we are striving to be in relationship with God. And the first ingredient to relationship is faith. Jesus, in one of his first teaching 
that he did in the book of Mark, I think it was, his first two words of the gospel were, repent and believe the gospel. You must have faith in order to be in relationship with Jesus. The writer of Hebrews wrote in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I wonder, do I have some diligent seekers in here this morning? People that say, I'm going to seek God with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind, and all my strength. So faith is required for us to be in relationship with him. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. And it's also required when you have faith that you demonstrate action with your faith. There is an obedience in faith. That if I say I have faith toward God, then I am going to obey His Word and do what His Word tells me. So faith is active. Faith, you could say, is a verb. It's something that we are doing. We are demonstrating faith through actions lived out in obedience to the Word of God. And so it brings us to a place of relationship with Him. His Word says repent. So what do we do? We repent. We turn from sin. and We turn towards Jesus Christ. And we, we walk away from the old life. And we, we die out to that old man that was corrupt and had all kinds of problems. and I don't know about you, but I found out that that old man still likes to creep up once in a while. And when he does, I guess i got to tell you, I sit some time and sit down and I pray. I go back to God and I repent again because repentance is a lifestyle. Paul said, I die daily. It says the goodness of God, it leads you to repentance. That's in the book of Romans. It's written to the church. It lets us know that God's goodness, even after we've come to God, after, even after we believed on Him, there's some things we're still going to mess up about and have to repent about. But when we do, we come to God and we repent. And He forgives us and we stay in relationship with Him. Faith brings us to that point where relationship with Him begins and continues. But Israel demonstrated immature and weak faith. Their faith was on their problems more than on the God who could solve their problems. They came to a place one time where they were hungry and had no food. And they asked Moses and Aaron, did you bring us all the way out here just for us to die? We're going to starve out here. They forgot that God had already dis demonstrated His great love for them by delivering them, by bringing ten plagues upon the nation of Egypt, and by uh, helping them to cross over on dry ground across the Red Sea. They had forgotten all the miracles that God gave them, and here they were saying, what, have you brought us out here to die? Not because their faith was God-centered, but because their faith was problem-centered. It was self-centered. And so we have to find a faith not in ourselves, but in God. People talk about the Jesus Christ as a crutch, and they may have a point there. I trust in Jesus this day. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I don't trust in what men say, but I trust in what God says. God will never fail you, and His Word will never fail you, and everything He says to you in His Word that is for you will come true for you if you will let Him. So God, because He loved them, even though they demonstrated a lack of faith in Him, He still provided quail for them in the evening and manna in the morning. But even then they failed in their weaknesses. They, they gathered more food than they should have and by the time the morning came the, the pot was rotten, the food was rotten and could not be eaten because they consumed it upon their own lust. And I want to tell you today it must be frustrating to God to always have 
his word questioned when he has demonstrated time and time again that he will provide for our needs and he knows where he's at. And guess what? God knows what he's doing. Look at somebody and said he knows what he's doing. So he demonstrates patience. He demonstrates protection. He demonstrates for us his love for us by providing for us those things that we sometimes are really worried he's not going to do it. But I've come to tell you, if the Lord said he's a healer, he's a healer. He didn't, it's not if he said it. He said, I am the God that healeth thee. Amen. The Bible says, I, even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. Nobody can save you but Jesus. He said it. He can do it. He can bring you to a time of great faith if you will simply put your trust in Him. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I don't see it yet, but I believe it's going to happen, and I receive that it's going to happen, and God rewards that kind of faith. So faith is to act according to the promises of God. I walk in faith knowing that He is going to perform what He said He's going to perform. He has started a work, Paul said, in you, and He will perfect it. That word perfect means He will complete it. He will make it whole. And so whatever work God has begun in you, He will complete in you. You just got to hold on to your faith and your trust in Him. Look at somebody and say, has He ever failed you? Has He ever failed you? You may have gone through times of worry and discontent. You may have gone through times of great sorrow and pain and suffering and sickness, but in the midst of all that, He has never failed you. Not one promise of God's Word has ever failed you. But our unbelief gets in the way. And you say, yeah, preacher, but what about when this happened? What about when that happened? Yes, He's the God that heals. He's the God that delivers. He's the God that sanctifies. He's a God who edifies. He's a God who lifts people up from their fallen state. And yes, we know people who have died because of sickness. We know people who have died or have gone through great trials and not been delivered from their addictions. We know all these things have happened, but that is not the failure of God to deliver people. Sometimes it's the failure of people not to put their full trust in God. They're like Moses. They have an immature and a weak faith. And I don't say that to cast stones. I walk in shoe leather like everybody else does. There have been times that I have been weak in my faith. I have said, God, why? And I have not believed that he would do the things that he said he would do in and the Lord didn't chastise me. He doesn't sit around with a big old scepter ready to knock me in the head with it. God is not sitting on a cloud, mystery robed, but instead He is here today to help you through your circumstance, through your trial, through your tribulation. And I don't know how harsh it might seem for you right now how dark the day is but I do know this that if you put up a wall between you and God the walls act as barriers against the intimacy that God wants to have with you in relationship and so unbelief is like a wall that we stick up and we say God I love you but only this this much I'm not going to let you in any further than this but I've come to tell you today that you can trust God. We are safe to give our hearts to God. We are 
safe, that we can lower the barriers. We can allow Him to come in and then let God replace those barriers with salvation because the Bible says that God hath appointed bulwarks and walls of salvation for each of us today. That word salvation doesn't just have to do with your initial being born again, but also has with redemption and also deliverance. God is here today to deliver somebody and to help somebody and to give somebody an encouraging word to let you know that I am with thee even to the end of the world. He is with you today. Fear. They feared the Lord because the mountain shook. They were not supposed to go up to it or even walk on it, no animal, or else it would die. And yet God has given us a greater fear in this day and age that we live in. It is a fear, not a toxic fear, not a fear of His manipulation or control, but it is a fear that comes out of respect and love for the sacred things of God. When I come into the house of God, I don't throw my gum wrapper on the floor because I respect the house of God. It's not that this building holds any significance in the long run, but it is that this place has been set aside for a holy use. And the holy use is that we come here to worship and to magnify and to exalt the mighty God who is Jesus Christ. So that's why we show respect in the house of God. And you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. That means you need to show respect to your own temple by not doing those things that would hinder your relationship with Him. We're so careful to keep clean the external things that we see sometimes and not the internal things that really matter. Paul wrote, for our light and affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. Because the things which are seen, they're temporal, but the things which are not seen, they are eternal. There are unseen things going on here in this room today that have eternal consequences. See, your eternity is predicated, I believe, not so much on one big decision after another, but it's the constant daily decisions. Little apparent decisions that don't seem to matter much, but in time they add up. The Bible said of Cornelius that he was a, ju- he was a good man and that he prayed always to God. And that his prayers built up as a memorial before God. Constantly growing and building up until the place where God could not ignore that prayer. You might be praying for a situation today that you've been praying for a long, long time. And you just don't think, well, God's not listening to me. But I come to tell you it's building up as a memorial And it's going to get to the place where he cannot ignore that prayer. But he is setting things up in proper order to bring to pass the answer that you're praying for. Because once the Lord said, okay, it's time to answer that prayer, he didn't just win Cornelius to him, but Cornelius and his entire household were born again. And it opened the door for us, the church, the Gentile church, to be able to be grafted into that natural olive branch. And today we stand as members of the body of Christ because one man, the Bible said, didn't give up. He just prayed every day and his prayers grew and grew. It's the little things that add up over time that bring to you a life of blessing or a life of cursing. It grows and grows. I heard one man say that it was equity with God. It's not like a bank in that sense, but there's something to be said about it, that the Lord can trust me. In a relationship that's built on trust, it's built on trust because I know that your word is true to me, and you know that my word is true to you. And it, it, if something happens and, it, and I get hurt because of you, my trust in you makes me understand that although I might be 
hurt by you. Perhaps it's because I don't truly understand the situation because I have such great trust for somebody. That means that I trust that what they're doing is for my best, even if it doesn't seem like it at the time. That's why I trust in him. I may not, you may not understand the darkness of the day, but know that God has you in his hand. And the Bible says if you're in the hand of the Father, no man can pluck you out. No situation can pluck you out of the hand of the Father. So we are developing. We are developing and growing in God because of the new covenant that he gave us. The, the promise that we can be born again of water and of spirit. And it's a better covenant than the Old Testament was. The Old Testament required sacrifice of animals and blood, and it didn't cover their sins for all time. It just covered it for a moment. It covered it for a year, and they had to go back and do it again and again and again. But Jesus Christ, the spotless Lamb of God who was slain from the foundation of the world, He died for every man, every woman, every child at the same time. And when He did that, His blood covers every sin that you ever will commit. Old Testament consisted of outward ordinances and required them to perpetually go through these rites over and over and over again. It was exhausting to keep the law. But those who come to Jesus simply have faith towards Him, yeah. repent of their sins, are baptized in His name. They receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And you don't have to do those things again. The writer in Hebrews again, in chapter 6, I believe, he talks about how that we don't have to go back and do these things over and over and over again like we had to do in the Old Testament. But instead, it's a one-time thing. I get baptized. I don't have to be baptized again in the name of Jesus Christ after being baptized in His name. Now, instead of smiting the rock, I can simply pray and God will take that blood that was Pour over me at water baptism, and that name he'll apply it once again, and my sins are again covered and washed by the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You may have sinned since you were baptized in the name of Jesus. That doesn't mean there's no hope for you. That simply means you're called out and say, Jesus, I'm sorry, and I'm not going to do that thing anymore. That's repentance. The I'm sorry part's just an apology. It don't get you nowhere. But the repentance is the commitment not to do it no more. He says if you confess and forsake, that is repentance. I confess my sin and I forsake. Oh, but he that cometh to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Every day you have to do your due diligence to serve Jesus there are benefits to being born again you can enjoy a complete and fulfilling relationship with Jesus Christ today because you've been born again that means that when I wake up in the morning when I lay my head to rest I'm blessed I can sing that song in faith knowing that He hears me. He's with me. He guides me. He leads me. You don't have to go too far. Jesus is only a prayer away from you right now. And He hears even your whispers today because you have a right. You have a right to come close to Him because you've been born again and you're part of His bride. You're His child. You've been covered by His name and you're in relationship with Him. And it's an unlimited relationship. When you begin living for Jesus, uh, you, like myself, did not know all the benefits that come with living for Jesus. But it's more than just saving you from hell. 
Do, do you really think he gave you the Holy Ghost just so that you could escape hell? That's not, that's just a part of it. The real thing is he wanted you to become a kingdom of priests. And he wants us to learn how to delight in our relationship with him. Enjoying God in a way that you enjoy nobody else. I've been blessed. I married a wonderful woman. And when I married her, I gained, at that day, three grandchildren. And now I have five. And there's something about glorying in their presence. And I have to admit, when they're all five running and going, and this old German gets a little grumpy once in a while, but most of the time, about 90% of the time, I'm enjoying the presence. And when I do, there's just something about watching them play and talk and coming up and giving you a hug for no reason at all. That's how we ought to be with the Savior. And when I come to him, I just want to wrap my arms around him and say, thank you, Jesus. But the wonderful thing about it is it's not just a one-way relationship. It's reciprocated. That's a nice word. I get tripped up on that sometimes. It's, a, a, it's, it's given back to me. He loves me, and he loves you even more than we love him because he came for us. He gave himself for us. So delight in God. That must be included in our faith as we live for him and are related and have relationship with him. To enjoy relationship with God completely, you're going to hate the things that God hates. And you're going to love the things that God loves. Those who really are living for God diligently, giving it their all, and in right relationship with Him, they're going to hate sin. They're going to fear the, even the idea that they might displease God. They're going to have a great hope in the promises of God. They're going to be content in their fellowship with God. How many are content that knowing that God is in control of the situation. You're content knowing that He loves you and He's got your best in mind. Those who are in right relationship with Him and delight in God's glory, they're also going to seek more and more understanding about Him. I know more about Jesus today than I did when I was seven years old. And I'm sure by the time God calls me from this earthly plane to the next, or if he comes back and takes me up in the rapture, then I'm going to know more then. But I am continually seeking to know him in greater, greater ways. Uh, you know your spouse more now than you did when you first met them. You've experienced things together, some good, some bad. And some things you just don't want to talk about, but you experienced them and you got to know the good about them and the things you didn't necessarily think were good, and yet that still did nothing but increase your love of that individual. That's how it is with Jesus. And so we learn how to have more and more revelation of Him. We learn to exalt in the redemption that He has provided for us. I'm so thankful God has redeemed me from my sins that he bought me out of the marketplace of sin, and I'm no longer a servant of sin because he has redeemed me from those things. I celebrate, and I hope that you celebrate the fact that he loves you so much that he will do that for you. That is, re is exalting in the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. And then we are, if we're really appreciating God and loving Him in our relationship, we're going to be torn up with grief and filled with the spirit of contrition or godly sorrow for any time we had a failure of love. A failure of love. 
a relationship that's built on love sometimes has moments where that love is tested because actions or inactions resulted in hurt and harm. And so sin is a failure to show love properly to God. And so thankful that even though there have been times in which I have failed to show Him the love that I said that I expressed to Him, He forgave me. His love covered my inequities and covered my lack of true love and gave me a chance to grow in love and grow in God. God wants you to grow in Him today. He wants you to be built up, rooted, and growing. And so that leads us to this idea of gratitude. Gratitude because I don't deserve the benefits of all that God has provided for me. I don't deserve one promise that He's ever given, and yet He gives. It's not about my deserving. It's about His glory. That He loves us so much that He allows us to hold on to benefits that we never... He told them children they were going to go into the land of promise, and they're going to, they're going to, they're going to live in houses they didn't build. They were going to pull water out of wells they didn't dig. They were going to eat food that they didn't plant. Because he chose to benefit them. And the writer in the book of Psalms says that he daily loads you with benefits. He daily gives you blessings. They come from him to you. And we ought to be thankful and filled with a spirit of gratitude today because of what he has done. And then to have a zeal for God's purpose. I'm talking about how that you can delight in your relationship with Jesus Christ. You have a zeal for God's purpose. I want God's will to be done in this city and in this tri-state. And the Bible says it's not God's will that any should perish, but that all would come to repentance. That's His will. His will is for you to give Him thanks even in the midst of hard times. In everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. God's purpose is that men and women, boys and girls, have the same relationship with Him that you have. Access to that same relationship. Now i got to tell you, my dad loves me as much as he loves my brother and sister. And we all have a relationship with him, but our relationship with him is a little bit different. We all have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, but it's not the same relationship. We receive the same benefits and blessings, but he loves you for your unique self. Now, I can't explain how he can do that with 7.8 billion people upon the earth, but he's God. Now, look at somebody said, I'm glad Brother Koontzman ain't God. You better be. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. The song said, I'm glad man didn't make sunshine, for he might not let it fall on me. Every day the sun shines. Every day God has daily loaded us, loaded us with benefits. And then when you're delighting in God, that means you have a hunger for righteousness. He that hungereth and thirsteth after righteousness shall be filled. You got a hunger for it. Hunger for his righteousness. So faith this morning, this relationship of faith that's built on faith, it arises from a principle of divine love. Paul wrote, love beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, and endureth all things. All means all. I don't know what you're going through, but you can bear it. I don't know what struggle you're having, but you can believe in Him. 
Uh, I don't know how dark the night is, but you can still have hope in all things. And you can endure it. You can endure what you're going through right now. And God has given us a beautiful thing called the power of perseverance. That I'm going to keep on living for Him no matter what. I'm going to bear it no matter what. I'm going to believe it no matter what. I'm going to hope no matter what. And I'm going to endure no matter what. Because I'm going to per persevere. Our relationship with God demands a faith. Not just a believing faith, but a persevering faith. For that first act of believing faith is what starts you on the path. Or a better and a more apt illustration is that that first act of believing faith is like a seed that's sown into the ground. But your persevering faith continuing to live for God is the water that's sown upon the seed in the ground that gives it the strength that it needs to continue to grow and become a beautiful plant and a flower in the eyes of God. A seed that grows in all things. A seed that's edifying. That's your relationship with God that I'm talking about today that you continue to persevere regardless of what's going on. Children of Israel, the intention was for them to become a nation of priests. God called them in Exodus 19 to be a peculiar treasure unto Him. They were supposed to be a kingdom of priests. Not a tribe of priests like Levi, but a kingdom of priests. And they were supposed to be a holy nation. That was His intent for the entire nation of Israel. But sin, disobedience, immature faith got in the way. We read in Exodus chapter 32 that Moses was up on the mountain a little too long. Now in chapter 19 they said they were going to do everything God told them to do. But then chapter 32 comes along. Moses has been gone a little bit longer than they thought he should be. They were begin to, they begin to lose their way in their thinking. And so they intimidated Aaron and Aaron gave in and he told him to give them all the gold out of their earrings and they gave it to him and he built them a golden calf and they worshiped that calf Moses come off the mountain you know the story stones were thrown to the ground that were written by the finger of God I would have liked to have seen them stones I was just wondering what does God's penmanship look like but they threw it on the ground. Come off of that mountain. And he said, who's on the Lord's side? And only one group, the tribe of Levi, Aaron, his sons, and his family. And that tribe came and said, we'll be on the Lord's side. And God chose to use them as the priest that he had intended for the entire nation to be priest. And so here we are today. To make a long story short, we are the body of Christ. Ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people. Why? That ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into this marvelous light, who in time past were not a people, but now you are a people, which had not obtained mercy, but now we have obtained mercy. See, God's will will be performed no matter what. He was going to make a world full of people that would serve Him and love Him. He wanted the nation of Israel to be that guiding light. And so He found a way. He had a plan because Jesus Christ was the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world to make sure that that plan would be enacted and all men and women everywhere could come to Him and repent. Because this gospel is not for the some, it's for the whosoever will. It's not for those who deserve it, it's for everybody that will come to him and say, Jesus, I believe you, I have faith in you, I love you, I repent of my sins, and they're baptized in his name, and they shall be filled. Whosoever will, let him come. 
and drink of the water of life freely. This is a free gift that we have today. It didn't cost you anything. All you got to do is call on Him and believe on Him. So we are His priests in this world today. You stand between God and the unsaved. You are to facilitate in them coming to Him and to example His very great goodness to us by how we treat Him in our relationship and how we treat each other. For if I say I, I love God, if I say I love God, but I don't love you, God whom I'm not seen, because no man has seen God any time, but I don't love you who I have seen, who is created in the image of God. You carry his image, his stamp. I'm a liar. Why don't you turn to somebody and with an honest heart, <laughs> just tell them, I love you. Now, some of you are married and you didn't do that, so please turn to your spouse right now and tell them, I love you. And if you didn't do it the second time, Brother Harper is open for counseling. <laughs> Praise God. This is the privilege of relationship with God, that I can trust Him. I can go to God when I can't go to anybody else. I can call on His name. He comes near me. We used to sing a song that said, Standing somewhere in the shadows, you will find Him. He's the only one who cares and understands. Standing somewhere in the shadows, you will find Him. And you'll know him by the nail prints in his hand. Wherever you're at today, if you'll stand with me right now, you have been born to have relationship with Jesus Christ. If you have not been baptized in the name of Jesus, well, first of all, if you've not repented of your sins, Today's a good day to repent. Repentance is simply turning around from your old ways and saying, Jesus, I'm not going to do those things no more. I know they displease you. And I'm going to walk with you. Turn away from sin and toward Jesus Christ. And then you're baptized. You need to be baptized today in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, the payment of those sins. And then the Bible says, after you do that, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's the Spirit of God that comes inside that I talked about earlier. That is His abiding presence. And maybe you've done all that, but you're struggling. You're hurting. There ain't no judgment here today. Nobody's going to judge you for coming to an altar and lift your hand and say, Jesus, I need you today. I, I need a little extra. That's okay. When I'm really upset and weary, I go to my wife and she comforts me. My grandchildren come sometimes crying. They want someone to hold them. That's how the Lord is. He just wants you to trust Him and to love Him. And trust that He has everything and He's working everything out for your good. Standing somewhere, somewhere in, in the, the shadow.
the nail prints in. Let's all come forward this morning, if you would. Let's come on forward and raise your hand. And talk to Jesus this morning. Let him know how much you love him. Hallelujah. He's the only one. Hallelujah. 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 
to have situations in our life to drive us to God. They told him the other day that he had cancer in the third stage in his colon. The same God that filled him with the Holy Ghost this morning, the same God could heal his body. I'm standing here this morning as a recipient of a miracle. I should have been gone 40 some years ago plus. But the Lord saw fit take care of me. God's here this morning. Trey, it's good to see you, Bubby. Good to see you. You know, every time I see you walk in those doors, I thank God you're still alive because I know that the devil's tried to kill you. I know that. And we want you to go to heaven with us, Bubby. We don't want you to be, we don't want you to just be a, a road mark on the side where the devil got one. You belong to the Lord. You belong to the Lord. Oh, standing somewhere in the shadows, you're going to find him. Oh, and you'll know him by the nail prints in his hand. Oh, in the shadows you'll find Jesus he's the only one who cares and understands oh standing somewhere in the shadows you will find Benjamin, it's good to see you here, buddy. With that papoosal in your arms. Praise God. Praise God. Tonight's going to be a service of prayer and victory. I promise you. You be here tonight at 630. We're going to have a great time together. In Jesus' name. Somewhere in the shadows. You're going to find him, and you'll know him by the nail prints in. Call everybody you can. Tonight's going to be a night of victory. Let's come and let God have his way. Bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.
Sister Blake, is that the twins? Love their hearts. I'm glad they're here. Woo!